Oh, that was a take, Jesus. That was a take, boys. <laughs> he nearly pulled the rod out of my hand. There's something about fishing high up in the mountains for truly wild trout that captivates me. The vast landscape, rolling weather cycles, the freedom and the solitude. And of course, the thin, perfect wild brown trout that reside within. Hello, welcome back. It's been a while. Uh, we've been really busy with work and family and everything else that goes on in the world, like most people these days. Um, but we are back out fishing. We're back up in the Tyvee Pools in the Cambrian Mountains in Wales, fishing a lake called Llyn Egnant. So Lake Egnant, or in England it'd be Tarn, or in Scotland it'd be a loch, very similar. Um, big mountain lakes, lots of wild trout in them, um, generally quite difficult to catch unless you hit it in good conditions. Uh, there's four other anglers fishing here today. Um, I've managed to speak to three and they haven't moved a fish at all today. Um, the conditions look pretty good, so surprising. Um, I've got a couple of hours ahead of me, so I'm hopeful we can get into a couple of fish. Um, if you are considering fishing any of these lakes in, Whale, in Wales or rivers, um, it's getting tickets now is so easy. You can go onto the fishing passport, Search an area where you think you want to be fishing, if you're on holidays or you're staying somewhere, find the stretch of river or lake and just purchase the ticket straight off the website. So, so easy. Um, and that's what we've done today. £13 gives you fishing all day on a number of lakes and stretches of the ri river. Just can't go wrong. Yeah, so I'll try and post a link to the fishing passport below. And if you've got any questions, there has been a few questions about where I fish, and I'll try and address them throughout this video. Um, on that note, I really do appreciate all the comments and the, the notes that I get on my social media about the videos I've posted. Um, I get lots of questions around the tactics I use and why I use them, and I'll try and go into that in a bit more detail in this video. Um, we've only got a couple of hours ahead of us, so I need to stop rambling and get fishing, and hopefully we can try and get a fish on the bank. Okay, I'm down by the water, so just quickly run through the tactics I'm using. I've got two rods. I've got my nine foot six, seven weight rod um, with a floating line around about 18 foot of leader on that one, tapered down to six pound fluorocarbon. I've got a black and red lure on the, on the point and the dropper fly traditional pattern, um, anything like a butcher or um, a dabbler, etc. seems to work really well on these mountain lakes. And then my second rod is a five weight rod. Uh, the wind is not too bad today. I don't need to be casting great distances, so five weight will be fine. And that's the rod I'll try and use uh, most of the time today. Um, and that is again, five weight rod, five weight line, about 18 foot of tapered leader. So I taper my leaders myself. This leader is going from six pound down to four pound. And then on the point fly, I've got a beaded Cape McLaren. Just when you're using bushy traditional flies, they struggle to break through the surface when there's not much wind. So I've just got it for a gold head on that one, just to get the flies down through the surface film. And then on the top drop, uh, I've got a, um, a Zulu with a red tag. Again, red seems to work really well on these lakes. So. Hopefully that will do, do the business for us. I have been watching the three other anglers that are in my sight and they all seem to be stripping, um, stripping the line back in, which suggests to me that they're fishing lures or, or that type of style of fishing and they haven't caught anything. So first off, first tip, go against the grain. I'm gonna fish nymphs and I'm gonna fish them slow. Um, if that doesn't work, we'll change tactics again. I'd really like to catch a fish on a dry fly. Um, there's not much happening at the moment, no surface activity. So if that um, opportunity arises, we will switch the five weight to a dry fly tapered leader and we'll try and get one on a dry fly. Let's see what we can do. When fishing for wild trout in comparison to still water rainbows or even still water brown trout, um, 
is that they are very or quite territorial and they'll stay in certain areas of the lake which means if you're fishing in an area where that fish has been spooked or there just isn't a fish there and you don't move you're not going to catch anything so the key is to keep moving and casting so all I tend to do is I, I work in a fan so I'll, I'll work a fan in the margins going out and then I'll move down once I've covered that area um, obviously if I see a fish moving elsewhere I'll cast to it but that's the general approach um, when you fish in traditional wets like I am and I haven't fished for a while um, I did grease my line before I came out um, so just a couple of casts to straighten out the line this isn't the area I attended and the start in so I'm just getting the dust off getting the dust off the rods getting the dust off me and then I will start in earnest so just bringing the flies back in really slow and we'll change the retrieve throughout throughout these couple of hours and as we just come in as we come up to that marginal shelf we'll just hang the flies and I just bump the bottom there so it's quite it's quite shallow here one thing I'm noticing um, from the last time I fished you is there's quite a lot of water in here it's quite low last time and it's quite shallow far out holy did you pick that up on the camera what the heck was that I need to check that's on the floor Oh, he doesn't fly off then he's line out that'll give us an idea of what if any hatch is potentially going to be I oh. don't know if you can see him there it's one of them I'm not sure what they're called do you know what they're called? I can't remember Pretty much I'm not going to stand on him yeah. yeah back to what I was saying so I might need to go up to the seven rod just to get the distance out past this shallow shelf I'm fishing on because last time I was fishing I was standing out there and I'm just bumping the rocks as I'm coming in so that's my wife then Hope she's not watching that. That's me arguing with her. You bought more fish and stuff. No, I haven't. <laughs> uh, simple things, please, simple minds. Okay. So I've been fishing for about 10 minutes now. And I've seen one or two crane flies uh, coming off. And I was fishing, I don't know if the GoPro will pick I was fishing down on that point where the rocks are, with the short grass. Now I did plan to fish down to the dam. The reason why I've changed and come up to you is because behind me there's marsh with longer grass. And that's where the crane flies will be. So if this wind is blowing them out of that grass, hopefully this is going to be the concentrated area where them flies um, come into the water. Okay, I've just gone over to the seven weight and one th good thing about the rain when it's flat calm it gives you line lay and a bit of camouflage it's not just the sound of your line hitting water so bump that one fish it's more than what them four anglers have had today so I can't complain Scott, uh, I've switched over now. I've got a Kate McLaren in the top dropper and a Black Marlard in the point. Kate McLaren on these um, Welsh pins, probably my favourite fly. Caught me so many fish. Old but gold, as they say. Whoa, that was a take, Jesus. That was a tip, boys. <laughs> he nearly pulled the rod out of my hand. Oh my gosh. Jesus. Holy. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, it's like they went out. Jesus. That's okay. No. No. It's tangled on the tip of my top, my rod. No. Oh nightmare. Gone from the skin now. Guess I'm never still on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How didn't I lose that fish? Holy. Well, I don't deserve to land this fish, if I, if I land it. Ah, oh, the line had wrapped around as I was reeling in. Oh, that's a lovely little trout. Oh, that's a cracking little brownie. Yes! Excellent. Uh, she's a beauty. Okay, guys, so just as I was saying, uh, the other anglers have all left now. Uh, it's been a real quiet day. Bumped that one fish, sinking the dry fly, pulling it back. The rain picked up, so decided going to the seven weight, bit of cover for the line lay. And I think it might have been first cast, going back onto the nymphs. We've got this lovely cracking little brown trout, which was a bit of a drama getting it in. Um, yeah, I didn't deserve to land this, if I'm being honest. Um, I just got him in the water. I'll show you really quickly and we shall get him back. Beautiful, beautiful Welsh Lynn brown trout. You don't come much better than that. It's not all about size when they look like that. Yes! Let's get him back, see if we can get another one. Okay, I fish back safely. Let's see if we can get another one. Oh, I've made up with that fish. Made up with that fish. Walked lots and looked lots. I've just seen them two fish rising. It's enough for me to come into this spot here and we got one straight away. I didn't deserve to, to land that fish mine as you saw. The line as I was reeling in wrapped on the top of the eye and caught itself. Fishing barbless hooks, catch and release. Yeah, I just I never thought that fish was going to stay on. I'm grateful it did. Not the biggest, but uh, when they're wild fish like that, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't think it gets much better than that, does it? Catching wild trout in scenery like this, 50 odd acres to myself. Just special. Special. And he wanted that fly. He nearly took the rod up my hand. So back into it. A couple of casts, work my way around, a couple of steps to the right. Oh, I wasn't filming. No, sorry guys, I turned the GoPro off. Talking to myself. Whee! Whoa! <laughs> Acrobatics. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I was just talking to myself then. Oh, the, bat oh, the battery's gone. Oh, the batteries are going to go on this fish now. Uh, ah, it's on the Kit and Clarion as well. Nice fish. Nice fish. Okay, the battery's about to die, guys. I'll uh, hopefully net this fish and uh, show you what I'm going to do. Actually, I'll just try and handline him. Hopefully we can get him in and released before the battery goes in the GoPro. That's another cracking fish. Uh, I better not, it's on the top dropper. Don't want to risk a uh, hook in my hand. Okay guys, we got another one. GoPro battery died. Um, I think I managed to get some of the fight in there. Just changed the tactics slightly, which I'll which I'll go through in a minute. 
Um, just give you a quick look at him before we put him back. He's full of energy. We'll just lift him up really quick. And then we'll get a, a shot of him in the water. Magical. Okay guys, we're back out of the water. I needed to uh, retie my leader. It was uh, a bit twisted and kinked. So, took the opportunity to renew the leader. Same type of leader. I've done his six pound down to four pound. Uh, same flies. So that's one fish on the... I'll have to find the name of that point fly. I, I'm sure it's called a black mala. That's what I call it. And then the second one on my favorite fly, the Kate McLaren. Um, yeah, so I just changed the, the tactics on that last uh, fish then. Um, and basically, what I was doing, what I'd done, I let the fly sink down, retrieve, stopped, let the fly sink down, and the fish took it on the drop. Um, really important when you do fish the drop, so that you keep that line, you're in contact with the flies. Easy enough to do when there's no wind, because the line's dead straight, basically. But if there's a bit of um, there's a bit of wind on the surface, it's a little more difficult to do. You can just do it by mending the line and taking in the slack. Yeah, two fish now. Small fish just moved there. We'll work our way around to him now. We won't rush, cover the water. I'm estimating about 15 minutes of decent light. I think that's something that can be over overlooked quite a lot as well in, in fly fishing and all sorts of fishing. Once you've got a method that's working, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll keep on working. And that piece of water that I'd covered, I actually was using the method that caught the previous fish. Um, just that change, just letting the flies drop down and took it on the drop. I remember I fished um, Thin Cluey Dog, which you may have heard of, most people have from the UK. Um, I was fishing there and I was just catching so many fish all on the drop. Um, and there was people coming up to me asking me, what are you doing, what are you doing, what flies are you using? What size flies? What depth in the water are you fishing? Not one person asked me what, what retrieve was I doing. Uh, but of course, you, you tell people, don't you? You help them. He was, um, he was fishing quite hard that day, surprisingly, the amount of fish that's in there. And there was only really me and this one other gentleman catching fish. And the other gentleman was fishing a sinking line with a, a booby popped up and just leaving it there, basically. And he was catching fish. Uh, people could see what he was doing, he was allowed to do it. Um, I think it's a lot of people don't, um, would rather not catch a fish and just sit there with a static rod with a floating fly up in the water. But each to their own. He was catching fish, I was happy for him, he was happy. Okay. I'll shut up again and hopefully the next time you hear my droning voice, you have another fish.